All right, on to Twitter. I've been I've been waiting to get to this one for a while now. From Yahoo.com. Twitter Trump clash intensifies political misinformation battle. <laughs> President Donald Trump's threat to shut down social media companies after Twitter labeled two of his tweets misleading sets up a fresh challenge for platforms as they struggle to deal with political misinformation during a toxic election campaign. Twitter on Tuesday targeted tweets in which the president said that mail-in voting would lead to fraud and a rigged election in November, the first time the platform has placed a warning label on Trump's comments. Now, just to be clear, the libertarian position on this is if you have a voluntary organization, you can have whatever voting system that people voluntarily agree to, right? If, if, you know, it's, if you live in a house with five people and you're voting on what's for dinner and majority rule is a vote of three and versus two, you're going to have pizza instead of spaghetti. All right, cool. Like, you all agree to that, and anybody can opt out and go get dinner on their own, their own way without the rest of the family if they feel like it, right? If a, you know, community here, like uh, in Juniper Wood, we have the Juniper Wood Landowners Association, the Community Action Network, which handles the roads, and you know, we all just again. By the way, I need to go give them some money. <laughs> Every time I think it's like, oh shit, it's been too long. I need to at least go to one of their meetings and and, and chip in twenty five bucks. But like, um. If, uh, you know, they, they, they take their money from the community and, you know, they, they have their little council and they vote on it and people agree to give money to the, the system where people vote in and that, that's what allows them to have that system. And if we as a community come together and say, well, we really want to have a decisive authoritative vote based on, uh, you know, the, the majority of the people who live in, in this particular area and we want absolute transparency. You know, it, it, it's really just, it's still, again, it's, it's up to what the people in that community want to give them the satisfaction, the transparency, and the legitimacy of the vote. If they don't care, and it's just like, yeah, vote by email. We trust you guys. It's so petty. It's not even worth questioning. I mean, if we find out later that it's corrupt. Like, it, it, who cares? It's, it's not going to significantly change our lives if you put a few hundred dollars into building that road versus that road, right? But maybe it's really important. Maybe the decision is, you know, whether or not to kick the sheriff's deputy out of the area. And we want to be able to say to the sheriff, we had a vote and it was clear and transparent and accountable and everybody showed up in person and we made sure that everybody in the area knew about it and we had multiple vote counters and everybody voted with their name by their vote. And it was, absolutely, you know, you could do that if the people want to put the energy into that. The thing about at government elections at the level that we've come to accept, they're all fucking rigged. I mean, it's just like they're they're all manipulated, you know. And 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 the greatest check I should say, because I'm I'm not here saying, oh yeah, uh, Gary Johnson really should have gotten twenty percent instead of three percent. No, no, like yeah, he was genuinely polling at that point, but it was because of the manipulation of the media and, and the debates and everything like that. And really, it's the manipulation of ballot access that libertarians have to work for ballot access. Like, say libertarians could be at 10% or could have been at 10 Say, Say Gary Johnson, Bill Weld as a ticket could have been at 10% in 2016, right? If we had been able to put all of our effort into promoting them instead of ballot access. But because that effort was split in voting, you know, we had to put half of that effort into, and this is obviously a simplification, right? We had to put half of that into ballot access and half into promoting our candidates. Well, even for like, maybe that would have been the difference. Maybe that's the difference between winning and losing at some point. Because we know that our money that goes into promoting our candidates is way more effective than the money that goes into their candidates because they're promoting a giant douche and a turd sandwich. You know how much you have to spend in advertising to get the American people to eat a turd sandwich? Well, you can ask the Republicans and Democrats and they'll give you exact figures. For the Libertarian Party, just being able to get a counter message out there in front of the American people the same way, you know, we get way more bang for the buck because we're selling good ideas, not, not a giant douche and a turd sandwich. So it's like, it's funny to see Trump battling the dominant paradigm here where to a certain extent, I'm, I'm with him on this one, right? 
But it's not that write in ballots will lead to a rigged election. It's that they're part of an already rigged election system that you called out in 2016. So, fun side story from lawandcrime.com. White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany blasts vote by mail, but has voted by mail at least 11 times. <laughs> yeah, White House Press Secretary Lee Kaylee McEnany has defended President Donald Trump's increasing attacks on vote by mail in recent days over the past decade. However, McEnany has personally voted by mail in Florida at least 11 times. According to an investigation of voter records by the Tampa Bay Times, McEnany has voted by mail in every election since 2010. And like, did she, no, she didn't point this out. She got called. I love that you can just call people on their bullshit like this so quickly sometimes. So what did this lead to next from the sun.com shut him down. Trump threatens to close down social media platforms that silence conservatives as a feud with Twitter ramps up. President Donald Trump has threatened to close down social media outlets he claims are silencing conservative voices. Later in the day, the president locked in a growing feud with the social media giant Twitter T's big action to follow. Now, this is like... <sighs> Remember, Donald Trump... I mean, I don't, I don't just say this as like a libertarian trope. Say Donald Trump is a socialist. Like he was a big government New York Democrat before he ran for office as a Republican. What he has done more than anything else that, that is toxic for the political system is that, so like as, as, as libertarians, right? We, we, tend to agree with Democrats on social issues. We tend to agree with Republicans on fiscal issues, at least in their rhetoric, if not their actual policies and propositions about it, right? What Donald Trump has done is made the Republican Party lose its one redeeming quality, which was that it at least gave lip service to fiscal conservatism. It doesn't anymore. So if Donald Trump is able to get this through right now and Entrench and you know what I what I think is gonna I don't think they're gonna get legislation out of this. I mean, if I had to bet, they're they're in to go. I mean, there's so much money around this. It's kind of like, look at how I can use my bully pulpit to manipulate you. You know, more than we really need to do something for free speech, obviously. And the money around this might, I mean, it could lead to legislation. Uh, regulation, something like that. But what I think is way more likely is that you get some kind of deal where Trump, Trump, the great deal maker, negotiates something with the social media companies, and he's able to go in and get them to uh, to agree to give equal time to liberal and conservative voices, which means zero time for libertarian voices. Or really for anybody challenging the system. So one more story about Twitter from Newsmax.com. And this is this is the, the, the crux of this is that Donald Trump put out these tweets and Twitter put a fact checking warning thing underneath them saying find out the truth about vote by mail, saying the president's not being truthful here, or rather, you know, we as a platform disagree with this. And I'm all for, you know, freedom of speech. Like, you, you shouldn't take down self-harm posts. You shouldn't take down racist posts. These are things that social media should be revealing to us, not empowering us to sweep under the rug and out of the conversation. Twitter Incorporated, the notoriously unfiltered social network that has been called out for doing both too much and not enough to moderate conversations on its service, has entered new territory at a particularly risky time. After years of staying on the sidelines, as President Donald Trump pushed what many critics have deemed false and questionable information on its social media service, Twitter on Tuesday took the unprecedented step of publicly rebutting 
two of Trump's tweets. When Trump posted that mail-in ballots would lead to a rigged election, Twitter added a link to his posts that brought users to a page disputing the claim. Fact checkers say there is no evidence that mail-in ballots are linked to voter fraud. The company concluded, citing news stories from CNN and the Washington Post, among others. Not exactly sources that you should take as the gospel. And I, you know, I'm not going to weigh in on are these more or less trustworthy websites, but obviously they have pushed some very dangerous false narratives in the past. But what this sets up is an argument. Again, here is a company spokesperson said Twitter will rely on trusted partners to identify content that should be fact checked but declined to name any formal partnerships. Tuesday's fact-checking decision was carried out entirely by internal teams, according to another company representative. And what's interesting is that this is where Twitter weighs in. And of all of the misinformation that Trump has put out, straight up lies on Twitter, of all the stuff that hypothetically would be much more dangerous if everything the mainstream said was true. I mean, Trump talking about COVID in some ways, you would think, hey, that's gonna trigger uh, a, a way more significant response than him saying something about mail-in balance. Why is, why, who cares? Why, why is it? And I think Trump knows this. I mean, how did Trump get to where he, he, he is now? Like by winning public fights, by winning debates, he knows this is a fight he can't lose. Because the proposition of the censorship there is, uh, I mean, the, the, it's, it's a false premise. It's an impossible thing to maintain a fair standard of. The more it becomes relevant, the more scrutiny any online censorship comes under, the more obvious it's going to become that it's manipulated and untenable and unsustainable.